Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how timers actually work under the hood, or more specifically, how they actually track time. If you're looking for, you know, how do the TON, TOF, and RTOs work, we covered that in the last video. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you notice, we're not actually in our workshop today. Uh, it is soccer day at the automation store, so I'm waiting on my daughter. But that doesn't mean that we can't take a few minutes and learn a couple of things. I uh, grabbed a Slick 503 out of our test box. And first of all, if you are coming to this video thinking, hey, I um, want to learn about PLCs, don't go out and buy one of these. The reason we're using this is the Slick PLC happens to expose more of the T4 timer data file than others. If you don't have a Slick 500 PLC, just follow along with this video because this is more about proving that there is no magical back end of the PLC that is tracking all things that are going on. Instructions are what makes PLCs do things, and that's what we're going to prove here. All right, so I've set up a program in the Slick 500. It's downloaded, and um, we're online with it. I've hidden all that so you can get a good view of it. And mainly, if we go to our T4 data file here, just like we learned about in the previous video, you have your EN bit, you have your TT bit, you have a done bit, you have a time base, a preset, and an accumulated value. Now we know the preset and the accumulated value are 16-bit integers. A 16-bit integer is one word. So those two take up two words. Now the others are bits. You have an EN bit, a TT bit, a DN bit, and you have a time base. And I would guess it takes up maybe one or two bits. That's five bits total. And we have 16. So that means there's 11 bits out there that are doing something. All right, so what I've done is I've set up a TON here and I'm just using um, a B3 bit to toggle it on and off. And then on this next rung, what I'm doing is I'm using a copy instruction and I'm copying T4 colon zero to N7 colon zero. And I'm using a length of three. And the reason I'm using a length of three is if we go over here and highlight our data file folder and we right click it and select properties, then we can see here that a timer takes up three words. Now we know one word is the accumulated, another word is the preset, and then at least four or five bits we have accounted for of the third word. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna copy that content over to N7. Now this particular thing only works in the Slick 500, or at least that's the only one I know it works in. I'm not sure if it's a flaw in the Slick 500 that it does work, or if it's a flaw in the MicroLogix that it doesn't work, or if it's just something they decided not to support anymore. This next line of that rung, all I'm doing is just displaying. Now those are the three words that should be copied out of that timer. We're gonna go to N7 colon four in just a second. Now obviously right off the bat, you can see I have a preset of 6,000 in my timer and I have 6,000 here. The second word is our preset value. I have a value of zero right now in N7 colon two, so that could be the accumulated value. And then N7 colon zero, which is the first word of it, is kind of look seemingly randomly just throwing numbers out there. We're gonna look a little closer at it in a second, but so I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on this timer. And there you go, right off the bat, we can see N7 colon two is definitely our accumulated value because they're matching. The second word is definitely the preset. So the first word is what's left. So now I'm gonna open both of those up in the data table. And we can see here's our T4 and you see E, N, T, T, and done. And now we're gonna to go to N7 and make sure your radix is set to binary. And now we can see E, N, and T, T, they happen to match up with 15 and 14. And in about 10 seconds, you're gonna see a change and you're gonna see 14 go to zero, 13 go to one, and up here you're gonna see the timer timing go to zero and then enable go to one. And there you go. You just saw it right there. And that is it. So bit 15 is our enable bit, bit 14 is our timer timing bit, and bit 13 is our done bit. So what I've done back over here is I have masked these bits out. So I'm using a mask move instruction and I'm taking N7 colon zero and moving it to N7 colon four just so we don't even have to deal with those bits. So right here on N7 colon four, you're seeing this number jump around. And while that seems like it's just randomly jumping through numbers, that is tied to the free running clock of the PLC. 
So if we go to the S2 status file, right here you see the free running clock. What that timer is doing is every time it comes around to the actual timer instruction, it updates its time based off of that free running clock. And that is how a timer instruction keeps track of time. Now, don't go any further in the weeds of this. Uh, instructors, don't, don't make this into a test or anything. The main purpose of this is just to prove to you that there is not this mystery thing in the back of a PLC processor that is keeping track of all of this. Everything that happens in a PLC happens because an instruction does it. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.